no, no, no. <laughs> hey, uh, we got an email from one of our viewers to one of our uh, producers uh, to talk to us about a company called Cobar Incorporated, uh, C-O-H Bar Incorporated. They're, oh. they're publicly traded. Uh, CWBR is their, is their stock. Somebody go to cobar.com. Uh, the uh, CEO and director is a doctor and lawyer, by the way, uh, Joseph Serrett. Okay. And they are a clinical stage biotechnology company focusing on uh, the, sub the, the development of mitochondria based therapeutics. I don't know what that means, but that's why we have the CEO here right now. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Serrett. Do I call you Dr. Serrett or do I call you Counselor Serrett or do we call you just Joe? Wow. You, you can just call me Joe. We're Joe's fine. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Why? Rocket science wasn't available when you were getting your JD and MD? Uh, <laughs> Slacker? What the heck? Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on. on. Uh, talk, yeah, to us about, talk to us about uh, CWBR, as the stock symbol says, and Cobar. What, what do you guys do? Yeah, well, Cobar is a biotech company, and we're focused on looking at the mitochondrial genome as a source of therapeutic peptides. So people talk a lot about the nuclear genome, what you tend to think about as your genetic code. But it turns out there's a separate genome within the mitochondria, and we're looking at that as a source uh, for then, as a starting source for then developing therapeutic peptides for a variety of different conditions, mostly focusing on chronic conditions uh, that have an, a heavy uh, inflammatory and fibrotic component mm -hmm. where we think we can really make a difference for patients. So, so talk to us about the indications. Uh, what, what you know, for layman's in layman's terms, what are you curing specifically, and what and and you know, what's sort of the I'm the, thinking joints. What's sort of the problem <laughs> nationwide and, and worldwide that we're talking about here? Sure. So, a variety of different types of things we're looking at. Our lead program is for something called NASH, which is an abbreviation for a mouthful, which uh, is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Hmm. But um, it's actually becoming one of the most common causes of liver transplantation in the US. So it's something that the average person isn't really familiar with, but it's a huge health problem. It's associated with a variety of metabolic disorders. So uh, think obesity, diabetes, sort of you know cholesterol problems, et cetera. Those things all together cause an accumulation of fat in your liver that causes inflammation and ultimately fibrosis and cirrhosis. And there's no currently approved uh, dr uh, therapies for that. Wow. So indication. So what about the indication problem. of a bad attitude like rusty nails? Is hey, there shut up. <laughs> hey, uh, Joseph, I got a question for you. <laughs> During COVID, and I've asked this of other biotech firms, FDA was obviously front and center in getting their uh, getting the vaccines uh, to the to the masses. Mm -hmm. Did you guys suffer from that? Uh, was there was there a shift in po FDA population over to this uh, over to this uh, focus? I mean, did you guys suffer as a company through through that uh, yes. FDA trial type thing? So, so not directly from FDA, but absolutely in terms of uh, recruiting and then conducting clinical trials. So it's really hard to get uh, you know prospective uh, enrol patients enrolled in trials during COVID. Um, and then a lot of the study sites where these trials were conducted were shut down. So our own trial actually was paused for several months. Uh, and then our specific study, you had to be confined in the clinic for four weeks to get this treatment. Uh -huh. um, and so that was a problem. And then we had a couple of subjects that actually had to be discharged from the study because they caught COVID uh, in the middle of the trial. And, 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 you know, what's interesting here going forward now, have you seen a difference uh, with respect to the arc of your own FDA story? Uh, as we call it, I'm, I call, I'm gonna call it almost post-COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're certainly, you know, back engaging with FDA. They, they, you know, I think they're continuing to do a good job. And, and obviously there's been a ton of focus on COVID related treatments, but I think the agency recognizes there's a whole host of other diseases that they need to be paying attention to. And so we're continuing to make progress. And, and so we're back on track, I think. Good. So for, so for you, yeah. talk about, so talk about your milestones coming up here. Is, so the drug seems to be working, huh? Is that, is that the yeah, way? So we had, we had a positive uh, readout. Our first human study uh, with one of these uh, mitochondrial derived peptides was uh, read out last month and we met, we, we uh, did quite well. So we showed that the drug was safe, uh, but also showed meaningful improvements in liver function after just four weeks of treatment. So we saw meaningful reductions in these things called liver enzymes. So that means better liver health. And we also saw improvement in glucose. Uh, again, a lot of these subjects have, uh, our patients have diabetes. So uh, showing that we can improve the glucose metabolism and improve the liver health is, is what we were really excited to show. His name is, is Joseph Surratt. He is the CEO and director of COBAR, C-O-H-B-A-R. They're publicly traded under the stock symbol C-W-B-R. You can go to COBAR.com. We'll put that up on our website. Uh, for you, Joseph, uh, if, you look at your, if you look at your company over the next five years, 
Uh, are these the drugs that you're going to stick with? Are these, are these the ponies in the stable right now? Are there more to come? Are you guys continually researching? How's that working? Yeah, no, so it's, we, we definitely have more, more things in the pipeline. So in addition to the one I've talked about, we've, we'll be entering the clinic next year for our second clinical candidate for an indication called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, another mouthful, but IPF. And it's a progressive lung disease that impacts people right around retirement age. Uh -oh. And it's got a mortality rate worse than a lot of cancers. Wow. So we're really hoping to be able to make a big difference for people with that one as well. And then we're also looking at some earlier things. We've got a, a project for acute respiratory distress syndrome, included COVID-19 associated uh, ARDS. Uh, so that could make a real difference there. Again, no, no specific approved therapies there. And then we're also looking at a couple of earlier stage uh, indications in a variety of different uh, types of, of cancer. Well, well, and, doctor, and just, well, doctor, yeah. counselor, it was, it was, uh, it's fantastic to have you. I'd love to have you back. Oh, anyone who's Don't trying to of, yeah. improve the liver is a good friend. Yeah, it's got you, it's got, I'm at the got opposite end there. of that spectrum. Cobar, CWBR, <laughs> Cobar.com. More big biz coming up. Uh, uh.